Hi, I'm Randy Reed, editor of the Edison Report, and today is 1 February, and I am at the Lighting Solutions Center in Greenville, South Carolina, and I am joined by Manish Bhandari, CEO, Tom Benton, GM and VP, and Chip Taylor, the Chief Commercial Officer. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank, thank you. you. See, well, thank you for having me on such an important day, and congratulations to all three of you. Yep. Thank you thank very you. much. I think it's a great deal for the industry. I want to start with you, Manish. What kind of investments and what kind of synergies are you looking for in this transaction? Danny, you and I talked about it uh, even earlier on. You know, when we look at investments in a business, when you bring those two iconic companies together from a product portfolio, from a people skill standpoint, as in you've got a lot here, which is very good. The question is for a business to progress, you've got to move it forward. I look at this thing in three different parts. I think the first and foremost is going to remain what we already started at the Z current side of the conversation, ease of doing business for the customers. That is going to be a massive priority for us because there is never an end to that journey. So we'll continue to work through that. The product portfolio piece, we are definitely going to be looking at expanding further in into the different areas. We have a lot, but there, is, there will always be a lot more to do. So we'll be working through that. And on the people skill set, I think we, we definitely will be investing in, into developing our people and working that forward. As a, as a very large company now, I think we've got the critical mass to drive these investments. Synergies, I think uh, there's no secret. Commercial presence and penetration using multiple channels uh, with our agent partners is going to be a big driver for us. And uh, in a very volatile world today, I think sourcing and supply chain synergies is going to be another key aspect, not just from a cost standpoint, but for supply reliability. Those are kind of the broad areas at this point yeah. of time on day one. And if I'm correct, you're moving to kind of a P&L business. What drove that decision? I think one of the challenges I've seen over the years is when you are a large company, you still want to always sustain that customer focus in the business. And the best way to do it is, in my experience, is to put people in charge who know the market intimately and can manage it from end to end. That's why we are going to move it into three P&Ls. These are namely our fixture business, including the indoor and outdoor portfolio. We're going to have controls because, as you know, now between Annex and Daintree, we are end to end, wired, wireless, we've got everything. Uh, and then we will have a growth markets P&L. Uh, which is basically comprises of some of the very strong businesses we have, namely roadway, specialty, horticulture, and the LAMPS portfolio business will go in into the growth markets. So Tom actually is going to be leading our aggregated, between both the companies, the entire fixture business. Jason Sherrill, who comes from Hubble, uh, will be leading the controls. Dan Phelan, with a long uh, industry lineage, is going to be leading the growth markets portfolio. So I, th that's kind of the product, <coughs> to sustain okay. the customer focus. Okay. So, Tom, for you, from a Hubble C&I perspective, what will change? What will stay the same? What will your customers see? Um, well, I think, you know, what changes immediately is that, uh, to Manisha's point, we've, we've scaled ourselves dramatically from a size perspective. Uh, that means uh, stronger access to channels, new access to channels, a broader portfolio of talent in the organization to be able to help accomplish our goals at levels that we may not have been able to fully accomplish before. So I think that's, that's exceptional. I think what doesn't change, uh, doesn't change is 100% focus on our customers and on our agent relationships and how do we find a way to be able to make them stronger going forward. Okay. So Chip, what changes will customers see from GE current, a Daintree company, from that perspective? What changes will they see immediately? Yeah, I, I, from a perspective of our agents and our customers, I would say that they should see no disruption. I will say that, um, that a customer that is on the Hubble CNI side today or a customer that's on the current CNI side today, their, their um, communication, whether it's with an order, processing order, getting re anything managed from a, from a sales side or a operational side, will be the same communication pattern they have today. They should see zero disruption. Okay. They're going to like that. I think so. They're going <laughs> to like that. I think so. All right, Tom, as a combined company, you've got a lot of brands and some overlap in products. Do you see any product consolidations? Um, 
you know, from a branding portfolio, we're always trying to evaluate uh, that collection of brands and making sure that each of them is able to provide distinct value. And if they don't, we've been very active on pruning those brands wherever it makes some sense. Uh, and I think that's the, the strength of having a brand-based portfolio because you can position products effectively inside the network. Uh, there is no doubt that we're going to look for synergies across the portfolio where there are shared products that are essentially identical and look to be able to create opportunities to be able to capture those synergies, as we noted before. But I think the most important thing for us is to recognize that the brands that are strong for us remain strong because of the uniqueness they have, and we intend to be able to keep that in place. And I want to make sure that I'm clear, Chip. A GE current rep to, to today will not have access to a Hubble-branded product, and a Hubble rep will not have access to a GE current Daintree company-branded product. Is that correct? That, that is correct, and, and I'll, get, I'll expound on that just a Please. touch. I would say that when you think about a... CNI current agent of ours today and a Hubble CNI agent today, those are pretty easy to think about. Those will maintain their separate autonomy in the marketplace. Our agents on the GE current side are a little bit different than just a day to day structured CNI agent in a lot of cases. They're a little more niche in some markets. We also today in any given market may have up to three existing agencies in that market already today covering different segments of our roadway business, covering our CNI business and even our LAMP agency can be a different agent today. So for us, it's not a unique okay. model, Randy, and, and, right. and it's one that we're going to continue, and that's a super important message that is, we've got to do a really good job, not only with our customers, but with our agents on how to manage this new structure. Okay, and Tom, if I'm correct, your new role is going to be GM and VP of manufacturing? Of fixtures. Of fixtures, excuse me, yep. of fixtures. So will there be any consolidations in plants I think right now you do a lot in Christiansburg. Yep. And is that still the plan? Yeah, I think, look, for, uh, for us, we've had, uh, similar to the conversation on the brands, we're always looking at the portfolio of locations and making sure they're optimized to be able to execute effectively for us. Um, uh, each of those plants has unique strengths as a part of what they do for us. And as we take a look at our footprint today, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we're not looking to be able to find a way to be able to do more nearshoring and finding a way to be able to expand capabilities, especially when we talk about Buy America and what we think the infrastructure bill will represent to us as well. So I expect to see more coming back into our facilities. Yeah, we love to hear about nearshoring. Yeah, that is exactly. music to the ears of the industry. Manish, you've been here a couple of years now. Uh, when you started with GE Current, then a Daintree company, did you have any idea within a few years you'd be buying a company that has over half a billion dollars in sales? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we, but then we already did. We bought GE Current, which was bigger than half a billion dollars in size. Uh, okay. This is uh, a very important day because these are two very iconic companies. And, uh, uh, you know, these deals do not uh, happen overnight. It takes okay. a, it's a long conversations which allow you to get, get there over a period of time. In my mind, there was never a doubt that eventually these two companies were going to come together purely because the complementarity between the two makes so much sense from a commercial standpoint, from a people standpoint, and I really think the industry needs us to be doing our best to service the customers. So to be clear, this deal was announced October of 2021, but long before that, you knew these two companies needed to come together. I think uh, not just me, but most of the lighting industry people who have been observing it um, have been very clear about it that the complementarity was very high. Okay. So, Tom, you've known at least since October of 2021 that this day was coming. Yep. You woke up this morning, you poured a cup of coffee. What was going through your head? Well, I think probably like a lot of our uh, employees, uh, just a lot of excitement. Uh, you know, we have been part of a conglomerate organization in which lighting was just one part of the business. And right. to be in an organization that is completely focused on uh, making a complete success uh, of the business and a lighting controls focus uh, is second to none and gives everybody a mission and gives an entire team the opportunity to be able to be 100% zoned in on success on lighting and controls. Manish, why not progress? Why didn't you pick up progress? You know, that's a, that's a good, very good question. And uh, first of all, for me to pick up progress, Hubble may want to sell it or not, and that's not a conversation we have ever had here. And purely because I believe that first of all, we need to be a focused company on lighting. So that's the first part when you're doing a carve out. 
But then the other part that comes in into play here is, I want to be focused on commercial and industrial lighting space. Because you look at the other businesses we have, which are not necessarily something in each and every lighting company you have. I have roadways, signage, horticulture. The DNA of this company is commercial and industrial. I think the other part of it is my, the, the investors who have supported us all the way through in this. American Industrial Partners focuses on industrial environments. And I think for us, it is the best alignment for what the company wants to do, the investor partner wants to do, and uh, drive this business fast forward. If I'm correct, the name of the overall company is Current. That is correct. Yeah, so what we have uh, decided to is our name as an entity will be Current. Our agency networks, as Chip pointed out, they are either the GE Current Agency Network or the Hubble Lighting Agency Network. So they are kind of different on, on that. But at the core of this sits our mission to be a very brand-focused company. So okay. our, our investments will be focused on increasing the value proposition in our brands. Take a Columbia or a Presco Light or a Evolve. We will be investing in how to make those brands stronger under the broad current umbrella. Chip, any closing comments? Yeah, so I think uh, we met today with all of our employees, and um, there's a lot of excitement. I think the one thing that, um, that we do want to share is that our, both of our agency bases are working to see the 2022 operating plan that both our companies have already delivered to them, and it's up to us to go deliver that to our shareholders and meet our commitments that we provide to our, to, you know, to our customers out there. Okay, understood. Tom, closing comments? Excited to get going. I'm sure. <laughs> Manish? Well, today has been an awesome day, day one. After day one comes day two. And uh, that's where the hard work begins, but also the fun part of it. Because you look at it, we, what we have is all the building blocks of creating a very strong company in the lighting industry. That's good for us. That's good for the industry. Um, and we are also going through a fairly volatile time just now from a supply chain, from an inflation dynamics, uh, what's happening in the market. I think it is very important for us to start looking at us as an aggregate, providing higher value to our customers. So, ready to get going. Okay. Well, gentlemen, congratulations and thank you.